Our coffee breaks with researchers aim to spread knowledge about regional development and innovation. By sending a camera around the world, we present you with different angles and insights on the topic. We ask researchers directly and in a personal manner about their work. We want to make scientific knowledge accessible to all. Hi, welcome to Coffee Break with Researchers. Today, I'm at the Regional Innovation Policy Conference in Florence and I'm having a coffee break with Elvira Ullarra. She's a reader in Innovation Studies and co-director of the Manchester Institute of Innovation Research at the Alliance Manchester Business School of the University of Manchester in the UK. Elvira, thank you very much for uh, uh, having the time to uh, have a coffee break with me. Um, we are having both a Colombian black coffee today. I hope you are enjoying it. How are yes. you? I'm fine, thank you very much and thank you for inviting me. I was reading one of your latest papers in which you analyze public procurement mm -hmm. in innovation and industrial policy. Could you please tell me what the paper was about? Well, this paper is first of all a co-author uh, with uh, Edurne Macro and uh, Yomika Zavala Ituraga Oitia uh, from uh, University of Deusto and Orchestra and also with my colleague Kieran Flanagan um, at Manchester. And the paper uh, looks at uh, this new and uh, policy instrument, which is uh, public procurement of innovation, and there uh, is been favored a lot. Is uh, there's been a lot of uh, work about the rationale of its use? It's a very good instrument, but not many people are using it, especially at the regional level. So uh, we, d in the paper, we try to look at. Uh, why should regions should be? Why should they be using this instrument? And also, uh, what it, does it take to implement it effectively? Uh, so, for the paper, we use the case of a particular region in Spain, in Galicia. Through uh, interviews and document analysis, uh, we analyze how they manage to um, use to implement and institutionalize this policy practice, because somehow. They have uh, they use it quite uh, widely, and we wanted to know how come in a kind of peripheral region, how come are they, are they so advanced in this kind of quite novel and, uh, and you know a transformative uh, instrument. I see from the paper that understanding how uh, institutional entrepreneurs mm -hmm. play a role this uh, procurement is quite important. How do you understand this role yeah. of uh, institutional entrepreneurs? Yeah, so in this case we find that uh, the implementation of, of the policy was down to the role of key actors and, and institutional entrepreneurs which are understood in the literature's um, organizations or individuals that work towards uh, changing institutions or disrupting institutions. And so what we're, we were interested in is what actions and what activities uh, they undertook uh, over a period of, let's say, 10 years from the first introduction of the policy to its institutionalization. So we found that uh, they were very active um, in lobbying for resources, uh, also lobbying at the governmental level to be able to use this policy because it wasn't people didn't know what it was, they were not sure about using it, they were resistant, uh, they thought it was expensive and too risky. So they had to do a lot of work in convincing people, also train people, uh, change the legal framework and the regulations and the guidelines and the procedures. Uh, so that took a really long time and eventually the uh, a lot of people in the government are, are using it. So what we find is that uh, you know policy implementation is complex and takes a long time, and it's often down to key individuals. That's indeed very interesting. So in addition to that finding, which you uh, highlighted, the the role of institutional entrepreneurs and uh, the time for policy implementation. Which additional finding mm. you would like to highlight from, from the paper? An additional insight of the paper is to unpack the rationale for the use of public procurement of innovation as an industrial policy tool. What we say in the paper is that uh, looking at the demand side is interesting both 
for a smart specialization uh, type of objectives or being more selective in your innovation policy targeting particular areas rather than you know uh, everything and on the other side uh, trying to be more transformative in addressing uh, societal challenges and public sector needs so there is two tendencies in innovation policy right now one is kind of going for more directionality uh, and kind of doing uh, particular types of innovation and the other one is being more selective which is the uh, smart specialization type of uh, policies. So we thought that public procurement is a good instrument that addresses both those things. Thank you for that. That's indeed very important to know. And um, I would like to know also what was the main motivation you had when you, uh, you and your colleagues, of course, wrote the paper? Um, so the main motivation is um, the policies um, in in peripheral regions and lagging regions. Uh, so I'm interested in how uh, regions that are lagging behind can use innovation policy for economic growth. And that's been my motivation um, in, in, my, in my research for a long time. So the first thing is trying to see how they can use the demand side uh, and part of procurement. And the second is how they can build their capacity. Uh, for innovation policy. So we know there is a problem of absorptive capacity in regions when it comes to using uh, uh, funds for innovation policy. So um, paying attention to implementation of policies and creating capacity at regional level I think was a, an important motivation for me. Based on the findings, uh, which ones would you say are the main uh, policy implications? Okay, so. One uh, policy implication um, is to the need to move away from the linear model of innovation and the very supply side bias of many innovation uh, policy toolkits. You know, the, we tend to rely on traditional tools like R&D uh, subsidies and so on. And we need to have a more a better balance between supply side tools and demand side tools. And power procurement of innovation is one of those potential um, uh, demand side instruments. The second one is the need to pay attention to actors and agency um, uh, in, in innovation policy. Uh, we tend to see entrepreneurs or only uh, firms and so on, but also uh, institutional entrepreneurs are, are important. Um, and another one is the need to pay attention to implementation and not just um, you know, the launch of a strategy, how you can implement it, capacities for implementation, and how that happens over time. So um, introduction of policies are not straightforward, they often take time, and uh, they require capability building in the regional level. Thank you very much for that. That's uh, very good to know. And thank you once again for having the, the time to chat with me. It was a pleasure for me to have you here in a coffee break and I hope to see you next time. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you are interested in more details about this academic publication, please find here the link below. And see you next time. Bye bye.